Okay, uh, last video in this series. So, two more examples. Okay, um, this one, the paper last year, a summer, uh, summer, a semicircular disc is described by this. Now, this we know that it this is equal to the radius squared. So you know that the radius is equal to two, and the y coordinate is zero. So we know that it's this uh, upper disc. Looking for a great compass. Sketch the region. Go, here we go. Lovely jubbly. So there's two. Okay. Um the y bigger than zero. So I suppose if we're kind of doing a bit better, we'd we'd nearly be filling it in and everything, but uh, I won't do that because I want to throw the spoke here. This is equal to two as well. And I suppose this is equal to minus two. But uh, error is just understand that the y greater than zero means it's up there. Assume SI units. Um, so I think it's a centroid. So that's just going to mean um, we're going to write down meters for the coordinates, presumably. So where x bar, y bar is the centroid, write down the x coordinate of the centroid. Now, if you can't answer this, I'm not sure what to say about you. Like, where do you think the centroid is? Um, where do you think you can balance this thing in terms of the x coordinate? Well, it has to be because of the symmetry. x bar surely is equal to zero. Okay, so that's that. Now we have to calculate this integral here. This integral here. Um, right. First of all, the area is um, half a circle. So it's half pi r squared. Half pi by the radius is 2. 2 squared gives us 4. So it's half pi 4. That's 2 pi. So we, now we need to calculate this integral y dA over half the circle. And the way we're going to do it is we are going to uh, fix an angle and look at the contribution to this sum from a spoke. So fix the angle. And that also fixes d theta. And look at the contribution to this sum slash integral from this little spoke. So it's going from uh, r equal to zero from the origin to r equal to two is the first integral. Okay, and we're integrating y dA. We need to recall that y is r sine theta and dA is r dr d theta. Right. So I think we're gonna we have some stuff on the next page. So we use okay, I've just right written it on the top of the next page. Um, we use y is equal to r sine theta dA equal to r dr d theta and find the contribution to the sum from a spoke. So the spoke we're adding up y dA, which is r sine theta by r dr d theta from r equal to zero to r equal to two. So the contribution to the sum from a spoke integrate from r equal to zero up to r equal to two, we're adding up y, which is r sine theta, times dA, which is r dr d theta. Now we have to remark that along the spoke, the angle doesn't change. So that's theta is a constant and d theta is a constant as well. So take out sine theta as a constant, take out d theta as a constant, and what have we got? r by r, which is r squared, dr. And then how do you calculate this yoke? You anti-differentiate it and the antiderivative of uh, r squared is r cubed over 3. And we're going from 0 to 2 so now we do top limit minus bottom limit. So we're talking sine theta d theta. Uh, substitute top limit so that's 2 cubed over 3 minus zero cubed over three. Two cubed is eight, eight over three, so we're talking eight thirds sine theta d theta. That is the contribution to this sum, the integral of y over this semicircle from this single spoke. So now we have to add up all the contributions from t to equal to zero, and then all these spokes up to this angle and pi, well, it's 180 degrees, but we have to use radians whenever we're doing differentiation, integration, when sine and cos are around. So we have to go up to pi, zero from this spoke to 
this spoke add up from 0 to pi. So this is giving us that the integral of y dA over the semicircle is the same as add up from t to equal to 0. Remember, if anything is too fast, you can pause me. Up to t to is equal to pi, or email questions. And the contribution to the sum from a spoke is 8 thirds sine theta d theta. We can fix the constant 8 thirds and we're left with the integral from 0 to pi of sine of theta. Uh, what we're going to do with this is um, go into the tables for this assessment. I'll have to send you some tables. And the antiderivative sine theta is minus cos theta. Go from 0 to pi. And now we do top limit minus bottom limit. So you get 8 thirds minus cos pi minus minus cos zero and you can go into the calculator as long as you're in radians but cos of pi is minus one so this is minus minus one which is one minus minus is plus cos of zero is one so this is one plus one otherwise known as two so this is 16 over three and then we have to um divide that thing, the integral over the semicircle um, of y dA, which is 16 over 3, divided by the area. The area is just the area of the semicircle, half pi r squared, which is 2 pi. So I have 16 thirds divided by 2 pi, and you can go into the uh, calculator and show this is approximately 0.8488. And then the last part of the question is indicate on your sketch the position of the centroid. So the centroid, the x-coordinate has to be 0, and this one is kind of less than halfway up, something like that. So zero along the x, and just two significant figures, 0 0.85 is where the centroid is. Okay, and we have one final example. I think it's a second moment of area question. Right. A circular disk is described by x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 9, which is 3 squared, which implies that the radius of this disk is 3. Sketch the region and then find the second moment of area. Okay, happy days. So, um, let's see. It's a disk, so let's sketch it. Radius of 3. The, ca the captions here are kind of explaining, oh, the distance between any point in the disk and zero, zero is um, less than or equal to three, and you square both sides, and that's where this x squared plus y squared less than or equal to nine is coming from. Okay, so this is a second moment of area. So here, these ones are, I, I think, a little bit more natural because what we're doing is we're gonna find the second moment of area of the spoke for a fixed angle theta. Okay. So we're going to find the second, I'll be able to write down second moment of area of spoke. It doesn't really make so much sense, I think, to speak about the centroid of the spoke. Well, it possibly is, now that I think about it. You could possibly actually do it like that. But anyway, that's, that's possibly confusing things. Okay, so we're going to find the second moment of uh, area of the spoke by adding up y squared dA from r equal to 0 up to the radius, which we found in the question is 3. Okay, and as before, y, it's probably on the right next page again. Yeah, y is r sine theta and dA is dr d theta. And we're adding up y squared dA. So this time I can write down, and I won't do the double x here. I'll just say i of the spoke is add up along the spoke from r equal to 0 up to r equal to 3, y squared, which is r sine theta by r sine theta, maybe I'll just notice if you square this, r sine theta by r sine theta, r by r gives you r squared, sine theta by sine theta gives you sine squared theta. So the y squared, where's the y squared coming from? Here. So you get r squared sine squared theta, and then the dA in these, when you're going through these circular coordinates as usual is r dr d theta. Okay, so along the spoke, recall that the angle is constant and the d theta is also constant. 
So if theta is constant, so is sine squared theta. And d theta is also constant. And we're left with r squared times r, which is r cubed. And the dr. And we can calculate this. It's just a, a, a straightforward enough integral. So, well, fixed constant sine squared theta d theta. And the integral of r cubed is r to the 4 over 4. We're going from 0 to 3. And now we'll do our top limit minus bottom limit. So uh, 3 to the 4 over 4 minus 0 to the 4 over 4. 3 to the 4 is 9 by 9, which is 81 over 4. 81 over 4 sine squared theta d theta. So that's the second moment of area of the spoke. And now we have to add up all the spokes from t to equal to 0 here, all the way through t to equal to pi over 2, t to equal to pi, t to equal to 3 pi over 2, and all the way back to t to is equal to 2 pi. We have to add up the second moment of area of all those spokes. So you get that the second moment of area is add up from t to equal to 0 to t to equal to 2 pi the um, second moment of area of a spoke, which is this. And this is not nice because I can fix the constant 81 over pi and the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared should be in the question. If you look back at the previous page, that particular integral I'll always give to 2 to the pi. So we've got 81 over 4 pi. Now, because it mentioned units, it makes a little bit of sense to uh, do a decimal approximation. And I get four significant figures, 63.62. And what are the units? Well, you should probably know from your engineering, but ultimately it's meters by meter squared and areas meter squared, meter squared, meter squared, meter to the power of four. Okay, that's a wrap on that.